Okay, we're fortunate to have uh, Hector Torres. Uh, he's one of the original uh, members of the ISA Mentor Program. Um, I consider him uh, an associate, <laughs> even more than a protege, but like an associate and a, a longtime friend. And uh, we've done presentations together, and he's helped in reviewing uh, uh, the next editions of some uh, recent books, and, and uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, and I, I think it's great that we have uh, protégés uh, um, besides the resources uh, willing to uh, to do these presentations. And uh, there will be a recording afterwards, uh, and we will also uh, send out uh, a PDF of the presentation as uh, well. So, uh, having said that, I'm going to make uh, Hector the presenter. So, uh, Hector is uh, now the presenter. Take it away. Thank you, Greg. Um, thank you for attending. I'm Hector Torres. I work for Eastman Chemical. Um, I've been working for the company for Mostly all my career, mostly all my career, 21 years now. I have experience in process control and, and continuous improvement techniques. I have worked on many local and worldwide project teams. Locally, uh, troubleshooting quality and process issues and leading capital projects. Worldwide, um, I've been participating in transferring new technology, consulting, startup, and commissioning of new production lines in China, Belgium, and, and USA. I mean, as Greg was mentioning, I, I was I have been participating in the ISA mentor program since its inception back in 2012, uh, and I have helped uh, Greg reviewing some of his books. Um, back in in 2013, the ISA honored us with the John McCamey Award for the article "Enable New Automation Engineers" that we co-authored with Danaka, Hunter, and, and Greg, Greg himself. Um, the, the basic control applications requirements are varying um, day to day due to the diversity of operations and, and processes. And in this same sense, the PID controller has evolved over the time to, to, um, to include a large number of features um, to address all of these all of these control opportunities. Actually, many of these features are not effectively used because um, the lack of, of knowledge and, and, and understanding of some of them, the number of options could be overwhelming. And, and the aim of this presentation is, is to, to show some, some guidance on some of these functionalities. Um, what we are, will be covering are the anti-reset window and output limits, the dynamic reset limit, the PID structures, set point filters, set point rate limits, and integral dead band. The anti-reset window, um, what it does, it, it limits the contribution from integral mode so that the total output does not go above the high output limit or below the low output limit. Normally, the output limit should be uh, 0 to 100 for valves, but um, one, one watch out is that the output limit should match also the set points of the secondary loops. That's something that sometimes um, the practitioner forgets doing, and that could uh, make the, the master, in case of a cascade, that the master could burst into oscillations due to this. Um, a specific DC as provider offers an anti-reset window limit separate from the output limit. What happens here is that the integral action gets increased by a factor of 16 when the PID output is between the output limit and the, and the anti-reset window. I have a. Um, I wanted to add this this plot. I'm showing um, basically two. The one on top shows the set point and the PV, and the one at the bottom shows the output of of the PID. Um, basically, at the set point change, uh, the output of the PID will start increasing at, at the normal reset action, or given given by the by the reset action. However, as the PV is approaching the set point and it reaches and it is time for the output to come to come off the, the output high limit, then you will see that the 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 output 
uh, will be increased or the reset action will be increased by 16 times to, to come off the limit faster. Actually, I found, I found this useful in, in our case, we have extru uh, extruder where we have uh, different um, temperature zones. So um, when you overshoot or overshoot where we have a different temperature, the material you can start uh, degrading the material so what you want to make sure is you want to get to go fast to, to the set point to your temperature set point however you don't want uh, uh, to overshoot or to overheat the, the system so I found out that for example the output high limit I, I set them at 70 percent and I know that the uh, in normal operation um, the temperature could be or the output of the PID could be around 30 35 so I would make the anti-reset wind at 40 or 45, so that when I hit the, the the output high limit at 70 to get to get it to temperature, then as soon as I'm it's time to come to come off the limit, then that will be faster and help me help me to get get off uh, the the high heating um, values. Um, dynamic reset limit, also known as the external reset limit. Um, this is this uh, a nice feature that um, when the output of the PID it changes faster than whatever the PID is manipulated, then the PID can burst into oscillations, and this could be basically for three reasons: it's a, a slow response from a control valve or, or a damper; it could be a variable frequency drive. It's that, that's what we are manipulating. The most of the time, this frequency. Um, or these drives would have um, a rate limit in the setup to prevent overloading the motor. So as we are speeding up or or, or speeding down, um, we will or the PID could could be facing this rate limit, and those the, the the drive will be acting slower than the PID wants to go. So so uh, the dynamic reset function will will help help you with that. Also, it could be that the secondary loops uh, have a slow response due to low process gains, uh, rate of change limits, filters, etc. So basically, here we have um, um, three blocks. In the center, I have the master PID and the slave PID in a cascade of range. Basically, in, our, in the center, I have the master PID to, to configure it. Do we need in the master PID? Do we need to check on the dynamic reset limit to enable that functionality in the master? And also in the slate, you need to check the use PV for back allowed. If you don't check this this box, what it will happen is whatever the cascade set onto the slate is, that will get transmitted to the master through the back allowed. And the master, if it has the dynamic reset limit, what it will see changing its its own set point or the, its output. So we'll think that the slave is, is responding accordingly. However, when you use the PV for back allowed, what the slave is actually sending is the, the slave process information, and that will that PV will get into the, that PV will get into the calculation of the preset action on the master, and those the master will will um, will be adjusted. Um, Basically, what what this is showing is it's an example of a PID response to a set point change and a load change. And I'm not sure if I was um, really clear, but what 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 the dynamic reset limit is trying to do is to take into consideration whatever the slave is able to do. So the master output will not be changing any faster than the secondary loop is changing. So that that will help the cascade to to react better to, or to compensate for these dynamic changes or dynamic differences between the master and the slave. And in these plots, what you would see is uh, to the left is a set point um, uh, step change, and the blue the blue line will show the dynamic reset limit active, and the black one will show the dynamic reset limit option off. To a set point change, you would see that you would have, when the dynamic reset limit is not working, you will be having an overshoot basically uh, instigated by the proportional and derivative in such case. Um, 
And to, to the right, you would see the response to a load change. Basically, when, when the dynamic resettlement is on, you would see that the overshoot is, is less, a lot less than, or it is eliminated when, when the dead time is, is minimum. However, when you double the, the, the dead time on, on both the master and the slave in this simulation, and I'm referring to the two plots in the, in the bottom, you would see that, that the, the overshoot and oscillations are a lot worse. And actually, in, in the real life, that could be even worse than it is shown here. Talking about the, the PID structures, we have all kinds of combinations between the proportional, integral, and derivative. Basically, um, all of them given by beta and, and gamma, which uh, they are a fraction of, of uh, proportional or derivative action that it is applied to a set point change. This is, this is a, a depiction of the ISA external form um, developed by Craig. Conceptually, this is how, how uh, a depiction of the ISA external form uh, developed by Craig. He will be working internally with the external reset feedback. Actually, to the left, you will see that you have the percentage set point. In this case, uh, he's showing a filter. And also, we have the PV on, in the bottom. Basically, to the sides, or, or you would see a stream going up, upwards, and that would go to beta, and, and a, a narrow going down that will show gamma to show how the set point changes will be entering, or, or, or the role that it will have in the, in the execution of the PID. Actually, in the center, you might be able to see the positive feedback um, by a summer, with a summer to the output one, the positive feedback. Basically, what, the, what it does is as soon as, as, as long as we have an error between the set point and the PV, we will have a value in the output. And then that, that same value will be, um, will be coming back in this stream where there's a summer with the smart preload. And then as soon as, as we have an error, that will come in cycles compensating for that until the error becomes um, zero then you will you will stop integrating um, the error and then it will come to, to a balance. Um, talking about the, the first of the structures, we have the PID action on, on error. This one provides the fastest approach to a new set point uh, because of, of the step from the proportional mode and the bump from the derivative mode. Um, a large step change from the proportional mode is key to reducing the rise time in basically all, all the processes, need integrating through integrating and runaway processes. Um, for the small set point changes and low controller gains with step change in the PID output from the proportional mode is small. The bump in, integrated by the derivative action can help to get through this through the uh, above valve backlash. Actually, to the right, you can see the, the this we have the output and you will see that spike there that's basically integrated by, by both the proportional and derivative that are trying to, to have a, a, um, an early kick in they, they kick in to, to get the PV faster to the to the, um, to the set point uh, the second structure proportional and integral actions on the error and derivative action on PV is, is the most used uh, structure, it actually eliminates the bump from the derivative action from a set point change by setting gamma to zero, if you recall that in the, in this, um, in this part, the, the bottom part where, where the set point, where, where we can see gamma, that by making it zero, you, you eliminate that, that part. So the increase in, in the rise time going from structure one to two is negligible, neg negligible for more important loops. The step in the output for, from the proportional mode on a set point change is large because from the proportional mode on a set point change is large because of the high controller gain. And increases in, in process gain or dead time will increase the overshoot unless the controller gain is decreased accordingly. If the elimination of the set point overshoot is much more important than rise time, then the structure tree is, is, is best. 
structure three is uh, integral action on error, proportional derivative action on the PV actually it eliminates the overshoot, but with uh, sacrifice on the speed of the approach to the set point for some processes where the prevention and overshoot is is more important than than the cycle itself, then this could be this could be a simple and effective solution. When the rise time overshoot errors from fast load offsets must all be minimized, the structure eight enables the use of aggressive tuning and, and it provides <clears throat> means to optimizing optimizing the structure eight enables the use of aggressive tuning and increasing the response of the PID for set point changes by 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 adjusting um, beta and the gamma factors. No integral action. Actually, um, structure four is used for if integral action adversive, adversively affects the process. Um, in the example to, to the right, um, this was a, a, a batch temperature control in a single end temperature. This is a mixed tank with it, with it only has uh, steam to it, no no cooling means, and Basically, it, the the plot on the top shows the original cooling, and basically the, the bottom top in where we were using the uh, PID structure. You see that the reset was was kicking in and it was integrating. However, we were overshooting when we changed this to a proportional derivative on error. No no integral action. We we're able to have a, a quick step change in the output. And then the, the the PID itself will react as soon as we are getting close to the set point. Um, when you don't want proportional action, this is basically used for valve position controllers to eliminate the interaction uh, with processes. Um, this this tuning of the BPCs is problematic, and and you can use feed forward action. To help, and and one more flexible solution would be the use of the dynamic reset limit. The structure seven is used for the same reasons as structure six. However, as, as in the structure number two, the bump from the rate action for set point changes is eliminated. Eliminated since there is no PID output, the step is eliminated. eliminated. There is no PID output change to get through the backlash and extinction. Structure six instead of seven may help reducing rise time for valves with poor precision. Talking about the, the two degrees of freedom, um, we already mentioned what beta and gamma are. Actually, when you tune the, the control loop for disturbance rejection, um, this, uh, the response to a set point change can have considerable overshoot, as we have been seen in, in, in past slides. This is uh, particularly true uh, when there's a derivative action required. The two degrees of freedom structure allows shaping, shaping, or still you can uh, tune the control loop for maximum disturbance rejection, but also um, you can adjust beta and gamma to minimize the effects to a certain change. In this in this plot that I'm showing, basically it's, it's a comparison between the process. I'm sorry, um, proportional integral on error B on, on derivative on PV, the integral action on error proportional and derivative to PV, and and the and the brown the brown um, line show, shows the two degrees of freedom. You can see that the, the most of the, the the better response from all of the three is is the, the two degrees of freedom. Actually, you also can eliminate the overshoot by, by entering a filter change. Uh, a filter also can eliminate the overshoot by entering a filter change a filter in the set point. A set point filter is used to reduce the set point noise and overshoot. If the filter time is set equal to the reset time setting, the result is, is proportional derivative from PV and I or integral on error. And it's equivalent. It, it, equivalent to the two degrees of freedom. The the issue here is, is the use of a filter on a secondary equivalent to the two degrees of freedom. The issue here is the use of a filter on deteriorate the performance of the cascade. Those in here if you are using a set point filter 
or a rate limit in the set point on a secondary loop in a cascade, then remember you can you can use the dynamic reset limit or the external reset limit to overcome that that situation. For the set point rate limits, the, the contrary to the set point limit or the set point filter that will actually provide the same the same in both directions, it doesn't matter if you increase the set point or decrease the set point. Basically, what you, you will get the same the same filter or the same um, um, first order uh, response for the set point rate limit. What you could do is uh, response for the set point rate limit. What you could do is you can configure the, the rate in in both directions, up and down, and that could that could help you um, actually controlling you the response that you want in any change. They provide a directional move suppression that it is extremely useful for preventing unnecessary crossings of the speed range point and offering a fast getaway and a slow approach to an optimum value. Um, talking about the integral dead band, actually what it all it does is is suspend it suspends the integral action when the process variable is within a decided range. Actually, this is help you to stop uh, small rolling oscillations um, from stick slip or backlash. And and the I dead band setting must be greater than the largest limit cycle PV excursion on it on on either side of of the set point. I found this this useful in in a vessel when you are trying to control level. In a vessel, and and we have um, continuous discharges uh, from a, from a valve, and then you have certain spikes of when you are loading the, the vessel or discharging the vessel, you want to, to maintain a constant level there, but you have those those um, noises coming from the opening of the valve on the top or the or the bottom, and then you don't want your your um, Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, and then and then by, by using this I dead band, you would you would eliminate the, the integral action, and that will help you to, to control better the, the the level. In summary, the role of the PID is, is expanding from basic control into advanced regulatory control with the ability to provide quick optimization solutions. What we have covered here is, is just a small portion. And of all, all of these over here is just a small portion and of all of these, um, all of these features that, that are there. Actually, if you want to get more information, you can, you can refer to this. Questions? I was wondering if people that are in the meeting have used uh, systems other than what we're shown here, you know, uh, uh, differ from different suppliers, if, if they have an anti reset wind up a limit setting and if it uh, how does it behave uh, here we we see the uh, re the integral actions increase by a factor of 16 but i think um, other suppliers have their own um, method of uh, preventing anti reset wind up limit or maybe they just have the output limits and there isn't even a separate anti reset wind up limit setting. Anybody have experience with other systems as to uh, if they have anti reset wind up limits or if they just have output limit settings? Well, my, my guess is from what little I uh, know is that uh, often it's just an output limit setting. And uh, if you go, there is a book, uh, uh, I say book, Advanced uh, PID Control, and it's by Carl Ostrom. And he gets into other PID algorithms or PID algorithms in general, and I think they're, um, they do describe, you know, just output limits as taking care of the anti-reset windup. Well, one thing you have to be careful of, uh, is if uh, the output scale is an engineering units, you need to set uh, 
the output limits and the anti-reset wind-up limits in engineering values. And uh, the default is in percent. So in other words, when you drag and drop in a PID block, it has the low output limit, low anti-reset wind-up limit is zero. Uh, and it has the high ones 100%. Now you go ahead and change your your output scale in engineering units. Maybe you're manipulating uh, a secondary loop, uh, maybe a, cool, a coolant loop or a heating loop to a jacket or coils. And say the secondary loop set point uh, limits are 50 degrees uh say well say 50 say 25 degrees centigrade on up to 125 degrees centigrade and uh, uh so you set your output scale to be 25 to 125 well you better go in and change your uh and i reset wind up limits uh in it, to put them in the engineering units and uh you would think that the pid maybe would automatically um, take into account, uh, you know, the fact you're, going, you're using a different scale, but that's not the case. To, uh, it's left at the default value of zero and a hundred percent on those uh, in a reset wind up and output limits. So um, that's a that has been a problem uh, that actually was brought forward by proteges, and uh, it is a significant thing to be aware of um, because you may have migrated from a system where you didn't have uh, output scales that you needed to set in engineering units. So, uh, any questions? And if you need, want to ask a question, you're going to have to unmute your microphone, of course. Or you can type in something in the chat box. All right. Well, we, uh, we appreciate you all. Hey, what, I, what I was to add, Greg, is uh, this is Part of a presentation and an article that we wrote back in 2012, and probably if, if um, people would be interested, um, you could also add a copy of that article, which which um, goes in more detail in in other in other um, PID options as well. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll we'll send that out. Of course, we're going to send it out to the main distribution list, but uh, you can forward it to whoever uh, you think would be interested in it. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, it was uh, nice so we, that uh, we, we uh, got done quickly, and uh, that's not the case usually with me. So uh, next <laughs> month, <laughs> be prepared for a long WebEx uh, if I'm the one doing it next month. Uh, thank you all for attending. Bye. Thank you.